Hello again everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel and today I'm actually going to be talking to you about the implications of untreated mental illness or mental disorder in our children and teenagers. What actually is the worst that could happen? And there's a lot. Uh, my name is Tracy Maxfield. I am a nurse, peer specialist, author, and staunch advocate for stop bullying and creating mental health education and awareness in our children and teenagers. And so if you've been following uh, my last, oh my goodness, eight, yes, eight YouTube videos and blog posts, first of all, thank you. And if you're just watching this for the very first time, please can you look at the button below and press subscribe and then find the little bell icon. And if you press that, you will automatically get emails and updates whenever I've posted to YouTube. So I would greatly appreciate that. Anyway, moving on mental illness in children and teenagers. So as we've already reviewed in the other blogs and videos, we know that one in five children and teenagers will have a mental illness or disorder. And mental illness disorder, I use them interchangeably, same thing. Uh, we also know from research that 50% of all lifetime mental illnesses will show signs and symptoms by age 14 and 75% will show signs and symptoms by age 24. So what that's basically telling us is the chance of your child or teenager having a mental disorder is extremely high. What we've also learned in the blog posts is that substance use disorder can lead to an additional mental disorder or specific mental disorders such as schizophrenia, ADHD, bipolar disorder increase the likelihood of developing a dual diagnosis, a subsequent mental disorder. So you can have a bipolar disorder with a substance abuse disorder. We've also reviewed the implications of social media on mental illness plus bullying. And what we briefly reviewed then was that if you have a mental disorder, it increases your likelihood of being bullied because you're seen as different, especially when you're struggling to come to terms with the signs and symptoms, or maybe you don't even know that you actually may have a depression or an anxiety disorder. Similarly, if you appear to be in good health, but maybe, um, you know, your child is overweight or they have a learning disability or maybe a stammer, it's the things that make them different which predisposes them to bullying. With that repeated intense bullying, especially if it's also cyberbullying, that will increase the chances of developing a mental disorder, uh, depression, anxiety disorder, so very, very common when a child or teenager has been bullied. It also increases the risk of suicide. And if you remember, we actually refer to it as bullicide. So your child or teenager is struggling to fit in as it is, right? They're trying to form their independence and their own identity. And they have confidence issues and self-worth issues. And so they want to fit in. They want to be loved and accepted by their peers and to be part of the group. And when they then develop signs and symptoms of a bipolar or an anxiety disorder, a PTSD, an eating disorder, depression, and I would say depression is the most common, along with anxiety disorder, they're trying to still fit in. Can you imagine what it must be like going through them? As adults, we struggle with these signs and symptoms and even self-worth and fitting in. And so for a child or a teenager, especially a teenager, because they're going through the hormonal changes and everything, it's very, very difficult. They may be dealing with um, side effects from the medication. And so all of this increases their potential um, for going down a wrong path. If you do not seek help for your child or teenager who has a mental illness, or if 
there is a diagnosis and then you still choose not to pursue therapy. Let the school know, support your child and teenager through this difficult time, follow through with the medications or just take them off medications completely. We call that an untreated mental illness. And so what is your kid going to do? If they're feeling sad, if they want to fit in, maybe they need to have something to make them feel happy, enhance their confidence. They're going to maybe engage in bullying behavior. Even though they are a bully, they could engage in bullying behavior. And think worst case scenario of that. A victim of bullying who then becomes a bully is called a bully victim. And if they have a mental illness, on top of that, there's a lot of hatred. And the worst case scenario is that your kid could actually take a gun to school and kill people. Think Columbine, Sandy Hook, just to name a few. So we have the bullying. Uh, it increases your likelihood of your child or teenager developing a secondary mental health disorder. So they could have depression, who then develop an eating disorder, who then develop an anxiety disorder, and maybe even a substance use disorder. And we've already reviewed that um, some mental disorders increase the likelihood of substance abuse. So we also have that. Um, you may also have a child who is depressed and needs to belong and is invited to a party and finds that maybe self-medicating with alcohol or doing pot is going to help them and make them feel less hopeless and less withdrawn. That leads to a slippery slope of substance use disorder. Other problems. You can have problems with relationships and think of maybe if you've had adverse childhood experiences. So, ACEs. If all that trauma hasn't been dealt with of maybe abuse or divorce or the death of a parent or something, that's still all there in the head and they will want ways of trying to cope or deal with that. So another reason, another factor that could actually lead your child on the slippery slope is they may engage in criminal activity. They may join a gang. They may engage in risky behaviors, such as driving under the influence or prostitution. Uh, up to 50% of kids who have untreated mental illness and have uh, undergone some horrific ACEs, adverse childhood experiences, um, are homeless. And we know that 75% of homeless people, including kids, um, have an underlying mental disorder. So that is your thinking, that is your worst case scenario of what could happen is homelessness. Um, definitely there may be problems with siblings. Um, there's an increased propensity maybe to harm drugs or uh, to resort to violent behavior as a form of self-expression and just trying to feel something. An untreated mental illness will highly likely lead to self-harming suicidal thoughts, intentions, plans, and maybe even the ultimate act of attempting to die by suicide. Other factors um, of an untreated mental illness is if they're dealing with this, um, incarceration, up to 70% of incarcerated adults, males and females under the age of 30, have, a mental, have an untreated mental illness. So you've got to think, if the mental illness was recognized and treated appropriately, would the kid have ended up there? Would they have gone down the wrong path? And I think that's always, I think it's really important. And you don't want to scare yourself or scare your child or teenager about the fact that they are now living with a mental disorder. Because we know that um, if assessed and treated appropriately, 80% will go into a remission, up to 60% may actually um, be completely resolved of all signs and symptoms. And so early identification really and treatment really does help, and I cannot stress that enough. Um, we need to overlook the shame and the stigma and the blame and the religious connotations because all of that is misinformation and all wives' tales. As we've already said, mental disorder is caused because of a change in the brain. So, other factors. Um, and 
again, the worst case scenario. Um, if it's not treated, then what happens to your child in order to feel better, to be accepted? Um, we don't want them to turn to drugs. We really do not want them to turn to crime, to join a gang, to become homeless, to go to prostitution. But that is a very high likelihood. We do not want them to become a bully. Um, usually they will skip school because they can't cope, they can't manage. Skipping school, failing grades, um, which may lead to potential unemployment. And about, to, I think it's about 50 to 60 percent, um, it may be even 70 percent of students with an untreated mental illness will eventually drop out of school uh, because it's just too hard for them not only to attend school but to have the, the concentration and the support and especially if they're being picked on or going through bullying or just have the intense pressures from home to improve their grades, what's going on. So. Um, I don't want to scare you, but then part of me actually wants to scare you because I believe really strongly if we're able to help support our kids, our children and teenagers, as soon as they start showing some of the signs and symptoms, and if we can get there and start supporting and go into therapy, and if they need medications following through, and helping to guide them through this process. Not only will you have a child and a teenager who will become more supportive and understanding, but they will develop an inner strength and they will learn how to manage their signs and symptoms and identify when maybe a crisis is happening and when they're not doing too well. So yes, an untreated mental illness will not suddenly go away when they turn 18 it will not suddenly go away when the frontal lobe is fully formed ages 21 to 24 in females ages 24 to 27 in males it actually won't and it does set you off a path that um i hate to say it um is not really good and it's such a shame that we have led our kids um to find, you know, to turn to crime, to drugs, or even finally to decide that life is not worth living, their life is not valued, they are not worth anything, no one will miss them, and they will actually decide to die by suicide. Ultimately, that is your worst, suicide and death. And suicide is now the second leading cause of death amongst children ages five to 24, and that's globally not just in the States, that's globally. How horrific is that? It used to be third, now it's the second leading cause of death. And did you know that deaths related to untreated mental disorders and or substance use disorders, there are more deaths from those combined than there are deaths by breast cancer, HIV, AIDS, and motor vehicle accidents. So please, read my blog post on www.tracymaxfield.com listen to this video and please help a child or a teenager who is struggling thank you again for watching remember i'm gonna harass you press the button and subscribe and blog and youtube video actually number 10 holy um i'm going to be talking about bpd bipolar disorder and DMDD, a disruptive mood dysregulation disorder in children and teenagers. Disruptive mood dysregulation disorder is a new class of mental disorder. Um, and so join me then and learn all about it and help your kids. Thank you.